talk the inner workings of college football and most importantly, Yellow Jacket football. Uh, joined now by fifth year assistant coach, Rynell Parnell. Uh, the first question, I mentioned this in the header, uh, assistant coach, D-line coach, also special advisor to the head coach. As the athletic director, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of titles there. Uh, <laughs> I guess me, me being at BW for, you know, as an alum, um, there's a lot of different things and connections that I have across campus and I think helps Coach Hilbert out, I mean, whether it's, you know, operation type stuff or dealing with people in food service or travel or what it is. So I think it's my job to kind of be that guy in between stuff to help take stuff off his plate. Um, and, you know, I think it, it definitely helps that going off campus, there's, there's people that were still here when, you know, when I was here. I'm fortunate to be able to just still have that relationship to make that stuff go, go the right way. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure those relationships are important. And I, I would sit here and tell you, Nelly and I are, are talk probably just as much as Coach Hilbert and I do. Uh, so, so go back. You mentioned the travel. Last year we had a chance to go to Hampton Sydney University. Uh, we, Labor Day weekend. Uh, I think it was a three night. I think we left Thursday, came back late Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. Or two night, th three days. Uh, maybe I something like that. Sure. <laughs> but well orchestrated trip. Great trip for the guys. Just as far as where we were and all that. Just just talk about what all that took to put together. Um, you know, I think for us it was trying to create that experience for the guys. You know, I think because it's it's fun. You know, we don't we don't do it a lot like some of the bigger schools. You know, um, so you try and have that experience for them to make sure that it goes smooth. You know, and and obviously there's coordinating the food and where you're going to stop and I mean we stayed in two different hotels right you know um so and how, how many is in your travel party when you mentioned that we're not talking about five people no no I mean <laughs> we, we were probably I meant you know probably anywhere from 70 75 you know if you're talking about support staff about 80 80 people yeah you know so that was it, you know logistically it was it was tough but again I think that with the support that we had you know when you, you plan for that stuff so far in advance that it's you know, the, the, more, the more you do in advance, the easier it is. The easier it gets. No, sure. absolutely. But you're to some level still, it's 18 to 22-year-olds. And, and at least 55, 60 of that were, were those, that age group. Sure. It's got to be worse than herding cats, I would think. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. You just don't know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I tell you this, though. I think our guys are real good about it. You know, I think the first day was – pretty relaxed because you're not really at that day before the game yet you know but I think that, that Friday night it was more so okay we're trying to get in game mode the guys are a little bit more serious you know and obviously it's a little bit more hey lights out you know and just make sure we're locked in on what tomorrow is yeah you know it's a business trip you know but again we try to create that fun atmosphere as well to say hey listen it is a it is a trip and road we're not used to doing it um and any type of excitement you know, even the one hotel we stayed at had pool tables and cornhole, so the guys were able to have fun and hang out. And I think it's it's a family, you know, and so we try to create that family atmosphere. Okay, let, let's go with that. I love that. And, and, and being around the guys and, and coaches, I, I think it's a great opportunity. So, so talk about some intentional things you do to help build that family atmosphere around the program. Um, I think it's, you know, you know, we get started in August, you know, and it's, it's a long season. Um, so any time that we can – have a fun team event, you know, whether it's paintball, you know, we want paintball or it's a, you know, three on three basketball tournament off season, you know, or, you know, it's even at, even at our practice, you know, uh, this past week we had offenses try and look at that stat and say that we, that we stopped the run and then we get after the quarterback and, and do our job as a unit. Yeah. You know? So, so last year, you, you uh, obviously our de defense performed very well last year. Sure. Uh, Lost a lot on the defensive line, uh, much younger this year. Sure. So, so how is that uh, that that shift uh, kind kind of mentally? How do, how do you help them grow as quick as they can? Because as you said, it's a very competitive conference. For sure. I mean, we're we're going up against grown men, yeah. uh, and and some of these a, a lot of guys playing are 18, 19 years old. So, sure. I, so how do you get them to grow up fast? Um, you know, I think it's you know I challenge them. You know, and I think it's, it's, it's for them, it's understanding that, okay, you know, this is not easy. You know, um, I'm going to ask some young guys to step up and play, and it's going to be a continuous, you know, can you get the job done? If not, let's go to the next guy, and then maybe you get another opportunity, you know, if you, if you earn it. Um, so, and to be honest with you, those young guys that have stepped up and played have done a tremendous job, and when their number's called, 
they're, they're ready. You know, they yep. execute. Um, and, I, and I've been thankful because those guys have accepted that challenge. You know, um, you look at guys like, you know, Seam Rashid, a freshman coming in. I mean, Ryan Pegues, who's, who played a little bit last year. Um, you know, even Jordan Smith, who, who played a lot last year, but, you know, he's still young and trying to, you know, get in his own way and become a really good football player. Um, but those guys have, have definitely made an impact. So, and I'm excited because the earlier you get those guys experience, yeah. you know, you look play the next year because they've had that game experience already. Right. Um, how, how many guys are you running through that defensive line on a typical Saturday? Uh, we're probably, I mean, probably eight to ten, I would say, you know, depending on where we're at in the game. Yep. You know, we have different packages, so depending on if you're playing three or four on that, you know, that particular day. So it's – you know, and they know it. We, we try to keep those guys rolling. I, it's important for me to keep those guys fresh, you know. Um, I think we, we, we're much more able to affect the game fresh. Um, so I try to make sure that you don't know when your number is called, you know, but it will be called, and you got to be ready for it. So, so what's uh, – b- before we get in to have a little bit of fun, uh, not that this has not been fun. That's kind of – man, that's kind of rude. Uh, but, but before we get into kind of the off football uh, – subjects what's the call when you hear over the headset uh you know i i I was stepped into one of the recruiting visits and and coach hilbert you know just a lot of energy from him uh but he starts talking about oh i love to blitz i'll blitz everybody if your grandma and grandpa want to blitz they can blitz you know that like i mean i'm not a big guy so i don't want to blitz but i got pretty excited what's what's the call when he makes a call that comes over the headset that 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 you're like oh this is gonna be fun you know what, man? It's so many different calls, and I just, you know, it's, when you look at him, he has that look that he's about to, he's about to send some pressure. You don't know what it is, but you're like, whatever it is, we're coming, we're coming after him. It's, the, and we look back at it on film, and we're like, I knew as soon as he called, he looks down, and he goes, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the house, man. And we're like, we're, we're, we're with your coach, let's do it, man. You know, so it's, it's fun, it's awesome, and, and, and I think that's what our defense is. It's aggressive. I think guys that we played against, they. They know that because it's it's who we are, you know. So yeah. and, the, and the guys again, even the young guys coming in and the guys on the team now, they understand that, you know. And again, they accept that challenge, and you know we know what our defense is. You can see it's really fun to play that way. Uh, that the guys love it, and, and and go back to the Ohio Northern game. Sure. Uh, we're getting ready. I think they got fourth and one or or, or some fourth and short. Uh, and, and we're getting lined up. I'm standing about the 25 yard line. Dead, and and it just hits me like. Coach Hilbert's going to lose his marbles. And we got like five or six students getting ready to take a picture of this sure. play. And I'm like, I just got to get my phone out and, and videotape Coach Hilbert because I knew he's going to do something. Right. And the, the stress release, the excitement, I mean, you could ball up all kinds of different emotions that he essentially let out. And in th- that moment where you see him, a lot of the coaches, a lot of the players just all like, let's go, let's get on, like we're in it together. This right. is fantastic. We got this stop. I mean, as a coach, you see that. What does that do for the work you do? Uh, it, it jacks me up, man. You know, I think it's there's so much that I think that, you know, people on the outside don't know how much work you put into it and how much work these kids, you know, these young men, I should say, put into it and the hours and the film study and the weight room stuff, the grind. And, you know, you get in games like that to where it's like back and forth, back and forth, and, you know, you're, you're just hoping that you come out on top. And then it finally happens, and you understand, like, hey, listen, this is a W. Everything comes over. You know, when I look back, it's funny you said that. I saw that tweet come out today, <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching him. He's getting jacked up. He's, he's going nuts. You know, so it's, it's, it's awesome. It's an yeah. awesome feeling, and I think it, it's a testament to the work that, that, that these guys put in. I, th- I think uh, Jeff Miller and I, our director of athletic communications, are going to have to have a talk about how we just have somebody like on a Hilbert camera no doubt. from now on because there's moments, and in, in, in speaking of there's moments, what was Marietta like that last 57 seconds? No kidding, man. No kidding. And it's like, you know, it, you know, just the emotion that come over your body through a game like that, <laughs> you know. And you got to keep your cool. You know, the guys are looking at you to be, you know, to keep your cool on and coach them up, you know. And it's just like you, you, just, you just know, like, we got to do whatever we can to win this game. Yeah. You know, and you got to keep guys locked in and serious. And I kid you not, in a game like that, you're telling the guys all year that, Play until that clock hits zero, you know. And that game was a testament that listen, anything can happen. You don't know how it's going to go. So for you to give up with one second on the clock is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and that game is 
that game was that. That game was ridiculous. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was watching from home, and let me tell you, uh, the highs and lows, the roller coasters that it was, but uh, uh, the, the outcome fantastic, and, and, and really the lessons they will have learned from that is fantastic. For sure. uh, For sure. But now let's have some fun before we uh, let you go. Sure. Arm wrestling competition, you or Dean Collison? Oh, it's me all day. Oh, I like that. It's I like that. Day. Now, over the course of the last year, there was a lot of controversy between a Brian Schmidt, our uh, assistant men's associate head men's basketball coach, and Dean Collison in the three-point contest. Who are you taking in that? You know what? That's tough, man, because uh, my man Schmitty, I, I, you know, is, is, a, is a baller. Um, I will say that I am a uh, – <laughs> trench mob. Um, my, my, my friend Dean Cullison is also a member of the trenches, so I got to go with him. See, I got to go with him. He's not going to know you're going to say that, and I will bet dollars to donuts he's going to rag on you when I ask There's that no same doubt. question because no he doesn't have faith in he you. He does not. He does not. But you know what? I, it makes him feel good. That he's gonna, once you tell him what I said. Yeah, I, I'll let him know. Yeah, he's going to feel bad. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right. If you were, uh, and I'm happy to give this to you, if you were AD for a day, what would you do? Oh, man. Jeez, I don't know, man. That's a tough question. You know, I, I tell you what, Steve. I think you're, and I, and I, I, I mentioned this to just, you know, just talk about the recruits. I think your game day atmosphere, what you, you've created for our guys, has been, has been unbelievable. You know, um, so whatever you're doing in that aspect, man, I think is, it's awesome. I mean, that atmosphere, and you want to talk about making that stage big time. And so the kids can go out there and play big time, I think, has been great. So, I, you know, I think for me it would be something to add to that, something to add to that, that game day atmosphere. No, I, I, I love you bringing it up, I, and I was not fishing for a compliment there, but I appreciate it. But it really, like, I love what our students and our student athletes are, are doing to support your, the football program and it's showing up. And that tailgate for parents and family weekend was unbelievable. And hopefully that energy continues. This Saturday's hard with fall break, but hopefully some students stick around. The Jacket Backers have been fantastic, and they really set the tone. Uh, and then the, the Bold and Gold will be a, another fantastic. For so sure. two two home games coming up. The last one, I, I'm a big Mike Leach fan because I just think he's so entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. And one of his great interviews was essentially – who would win in a battle of the Pac-12 mascots? So in an OAC battle royale of mascots, who would win, and maybe why would some others not win? Oh, man. Man. Well, being a BW alum, okay, I got to go with Stinger, okay, obviously hometown. Um, man, you know, I think you look at a couple of them, you know, comments they're so new okay i don't you know yeah they don't have a chance um <laughs> you know um so i yeah i think stinger's gonna take the, the, the cake in that one you know um i i can't think of one right now that would beat him so i love you know, it yeah we're, we're gonna go ahead and go with stinger on that one i love it yeah nelly thank you so much I appreciate uh it. it's it's a good opportunity for me just uh you know you do a job and a lot of our coaches but you guys do a job that's really thankless at times uh, as a director of athletics, I can't say how much I appreciate the work you do day in and day out for our student athletes, for future student athletes or current student athletes and those that played for you and with you back in the day. So publicly, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll try not to bother you too much. No, you're good. Thank you. Thank you so much to Nelly, uh, just a great member, uh, a great alum, first of all, and just a great member of our coaching staff. Now – Oh, man, th this is going to be entertaining. This guy still has a job uh, after pushing me down on uh, and shoving me, some might call assault, during our giving day last year. But uh, honored to have first year, or first, I said, first year as an assistant head coach, fourth year here at BW, Dean Collison, uh, here to join in us, uh, oversees the offensive line and, and all our recruiting. Welcome, sir. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Yourself? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, part of me just was going to turn the floor over to you, but <laughs> one of the conversations uh, Nellie and I got into uh, was the jugs competition. Any initial thoughts on that? Your video has gone viral. I was a little curious. We have not seen a Coach Parnell video yet. Yeah. Uh, 
honestly, in the mind of a great athlete, just another day at the office. Uh, <laughs> I have made the same claim for four years now that I am the best jump shooter in the office. That's the only thing I've claimed athletically. Tommy McIntyre, when he was here, challenged me on that. Uh, and he found out the hard way what happens when you challenge somebody who makes those claims. I am now staking my claim as best punt catcher on the football staff, even though I think I partly tore my Achilles, but it was worth it because <laughs> kids had a good time and I got to showcase my athletic ability. So it was so, fun. <laughs> that's fantastic. So this was going to be a question towards the end, but before we jump into the football, we'll go a little different, go, go a little backwards. You mentioned the uh, premier jump shooter of BW coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, who would you take in a win, be, uh, a, a shooting competition between you and Coach Schmidt with our men's basketball oh, that's, program? That's easy. He's been and ducking me for years now. I, I told him at the golf outing he had an easy putt to make. If he makes it, he has to challenge me in a three-point shootout, but he missed it on purpose, which was crazy. <laughs> so – just uh, proof that he didn't want to want to take take your challenge. And it's the craziest thing, but he he's smart though. He knows when somebody's that confident about it and their ability, and he knows too. He's seen me shoot stuff into trash cans and whatnot. So, but uh, that's my guy. <laughs> and so, so the better question is, who did you think Nelly picked? He probably picked Schmitty. Did he? Did he? He was trench mob all the way. Was he really? He was trench mob all the way. Which is wild because I'm not as loyal. Have you seen Nelly shoot free throws? <laughs> oh my God! It's uh, he, he he's was, got an underhand. He has to. <laughs> he was a proud trench mobber. He was 100 percent supportive of you. There was there wasn't even a hesitation in his voice who he would take. I just that's awesome, and I'm glad to hear that. But from my Mamba mentality, I can't say the same for Nelly because I'm not a liar. He cannot shoot at all. So. <laughs> I appreciate his support, though. Right, there you go. He knows. He's in it to win it. So so let's talk football a little bit. Uh, and, and one of the reasons I did want to have both of you guys on, you two are a big operation behind the scenes. Uh, and, and you with recruiting kind of overseeing that effort. So just talk a little bit about what that process is, uh, you know, where, where you find the recruit, uh, the, the the engagement process, the the kind of the, the wedding, the, the marriage, the – all that, how that happens for you in, in the football program? Uh, there is no process without people. And I think the thing that I've been blessed with, and I know Coach Hilbert would probably tell you the same thing since he's been here, is we have a staff that just show up at the, every day in that realm and just go to work. And I'll be the first to tell you, I'm, I'm a simpleton. I come from a hardworking, blue-collar family. My mom has owned a salon for I don't even know how many years. My dad's been a blue-collar guy, same with my brother. The only way we know how to do things is just hard work, and we don't make it any harder than it needs to be. And the easiest thing I've – not easiest, but the thing I've just done is just given guys the roadmap and the tools about what we want to do, their specific areas. Uh the applications and, and website publications that we use, not only Huddle, but Verified and other services that have helped us find the right guys to get in here. And it's just like, like any good carpenter, you know. You could have all the two tools in the world, but it's how you use them. And I think our guys do a phenomenal job just showing up every day and, and weekly, and our GAs too. I was a GA. I know what that job is like. And we ask our guys to do a lot. And – Brenton Miller, Scotty, uh, Krieg, and Zimmy, all those guys. And if it wasn't for them, there would be no BW recruiting classes. And it's just giving guys the direction and the roadmap we want to go and then identifying those guys that we want to bring in to help build our culture because BW football is not for everybody, and we're maybe not for every recruit either. We understand that. I think there's a certain type of kid that – we like to pinpoint and bring in and that's a guy that loves football first and he loves the process of it and not just being given something to start I think that's been evident with our class this year that with the guys that we brought in that all starts just the process of identifying it and building that relationship too uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to say in recruiting relationship I think is an overused word by people that just throw it out there to say that they do it true i I think most of our staff, if I'm not mistaken, I coached high school ball, as did Coach Hilbert did for a couple years. Yep. Uh, I know Coach, uh, Coach Orts did at one time. 
I've been lucky to be in that realm too because I actually did learn how to build relationships with kids and you know talking like getting to know them on the personal level as opposed to just the athletic side and being genuine behind that fact too and I think that's something that's sp- that has spoke to a lot of kids because when they see that side of it and they see how we go about our our way of doing things and our the way we work and the way we approach things they want to be a part of it so and then on top of that too is from a coaching side just having that pool of kids that you know that you can pull from uh, from the numbers perspective but whittling that number down through the kids who are truly interested and then building on it from there so and it had I mean it's it, it's a process now it is yeah but I think that's what makes it worthwhile too you get to meet new people every day so that's <laughs> that's something fun get a new but, friend every day yeah, exactly <laughs> so what, what one of the things you, you know kind of is uh, somewhat of an outsider to the program right that but but gets to see the inside and and, and gets to see how you guys make the sausage essentially uh and, and Tim Budick who we had on earlier the the, the president of our brown and gold and and great cross-country track athlete said you know, he, he came and, and, and he ran for Coach T. When, when I get to see the guys and, and, and spend time with the football team and, and, and on the sidelines, you know, they're getting, an edu- they're getting a great education here. They're getting a great experience. But they are playing for you. They're playing for Coach Parnell. They're, they're playing for Coach Hilvert. And, and I mentioned that video with uh, as Coach Parnell and I were talking <laughs> when they got the win and, you know, the, the yeah. video of me recording Coach Hilvert. But – you know, you know, talk about how you guys, it, it, there's got to be some intentionality to, to building the, that re, that kind of relationship because that's different than just a, we're going to make sure you get an education, we're going to make sure you play some football and, you know, four years we'll wash our hands of you. It's, yeah. it's a lot deeper than that. Yeah. There's got to be something you guys do on purpose. I Honestly, and I hope this doesn't sound like a cop-out answer, I really just believe we have a bunch of people on staff that love football. And, and love competing in the, the spirit of competition, too. And it's funny, I was thinking about this earlier, too, because I was going through the mental script of, man, i got to say something funny in the radio show. <laughs> but uh, when you look back at our team in uh, week one, we weren't probably conditioned very well to answer that adversity bell and we have all of our kids are competitive. I know that, but I think the response to certain things wasn't where it needed to be yet. And we maybe had to go through certain things to learn how to appropriately respond to it from the competition side. And as coaches, where we come in is making sure we're delivering that message, that positive message every day that if you keep swinging away, if you keep grinding through it, good things will happen. You know, in, in the O line room, our unofficial slogan is good things happen when you play hard. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. I mean, that was evident versus Ohio Northern. That was evident versus Marietta. You know, I think specifically back to week one, how I would love to play that game again where you're up 14 nothing, you're inside the five, and unfortunately we turned the ball over and the wheels kind of came off from there. Fast forward three weeks later, multiple turnovers, but kept playing, kept playing hard. Two big plays later defense time and I I can't shout out our defense enough but those guys have no choice but to play hard because when the head coach is constantly watching you that's a little bit different so shout out dark side but uh I think that that constant message of of plugging away and and not letting the little things hold you back from progressing forward don't don't make it one step forward two steps back make it one step back and two steps forward and I think our guys have finally started to learn as we approach the second half of our schedule of what it takes to win in that dynamic. Because I, I told the O-line today at the end of practice, it's fun to be a part of a great team with a bunch of talent everywhere where you know you're going you're gonna to be the team that wins week in and week out. I've been a part of teams like that. That's fun. The teams that you love to coach, though, are the guys that constantly find ways to win because they're going to be better conditioned for it by the end of the season. And that's what's made it worthwhile. And I think Coach Hilbert – I don't think that guy's ever had truly like a bad day in his life. Mainly it's because of the Dyke Mountain Dew. But <laughs> just his energy that he gives off and it rubs it rubs off on everyone else in the office and then our kids obviously get entrenched in it. And I think that's helped us as the season has got on. Just that po- that power, that positive mindset thing, not to get too cheesy, but you can see the, the shift from where it's been from week one till now. And then when you saw him celebrating – 
that's as genuine as it gets right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I I thought he was going to pop a coronary or something. And, but that's just – that's him, and that's who you want to play for. It means that much because if you just approached winning as some kind of laissez-faire thing, well, I don't want to be a part of that. Right. So – yeah, so after the game, you know, he goes through the line and gives me a big hug, and he hit my back so hard I had a red mark on the, my back, I think, for the next two days because he was so juiced up. Uh, you know, we got a little bit of time left. How about a, maybe a Coach Hilbert story that uh, the public doesn't see? Oh, man. Uh, let's tee one up for you here, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll tell this story, and maybe I have told it before. Uh, <laughs> so for those that don't know, Coach Hilbert had a weightlifting accident uh, back in the day that unfortunately took half of his index finger with it. And when I first interviewed at BW back in February of 19, and he introduced himself to me, and I shook his hand, and like... <laughs> Normally, when you're really good friends with someone and they shake your hand and they, like, tickle your palm with their finger, you're like, what the heck? Well, he kind of did that, like, but not on purpose. And I was like, whoa, like, we're not that close, dude. Like, but I still shook his hand. And then he proceeded to tell me his first story after after I had gotten hired. He said, you mind me asking what happened to your finger? And he goes, yeah, actually, we were vacationing uh, in the uh, Arctic. He goes, polar bear, man. And he's had a different story for it every time. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, when he told me the real story that it was from a weightlifting accident, my only response was, of course. <laughs> like, <laughs> just of course. So, but, no, I I tell you, working for that guy, it's it's been a blast. He uh, He's very forthright. He's very genuine. And I'm not saying this just to get brownie points in the office because he knows if we ever arm wrestled, he know who'd win. But, uh <laughs> Uh, he's been awesome helping me along in my development as a coach. Uh, he lets guys figure figure things out and then ask questions if need be. But he's also – he's the first guy. If you're not he, – he's done it to me before. He does it all the time. If he's not seeing what he, he needs or he thinks you could be doing something more, he'll tell you. And yeah. He'll just – he'll be forthright about it. So, it's been, a, it's been a fortunate instance and one I know I'll always be better for as I, I go. So – all right, you mentioned arm wrestling. <laughs> uh, you or Nelly and uh, Coach Parnell in an arm wrestling match? A thousand percent me. So we do a uh, – before every Thursday practice, we have a competition of throwing footballs at the goal. But you were out there the other yeah. day. So I was throwing at the crossbar. And my man's working with some 75-year-old shoulders because he, <laughs> he can't throw. So I would probably not – challenge him just because I know if I do I'll snap his arm off his body so I don't want to do that to him but like I said that's my guy you know we ride or die I told him for Halloween we should be uh, men in black agent J and agent K nice but, you know just the heftier version so <laughs> yeah, but, yeah so uh late in the game one pl one play left need a touchdown to win you're at about the three yard line running the ball to Tom DeAngelis or fade route to Tom Heil. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to meet you halfway. <laughs> Tommy Heil can jump. Tommy D, I know, can throw. I'm handing it off to Tommy D, and we're doing a jump pass to Tom <laughs> Heil to win it. That's 1,000% what I would do. And then when they high-five, they can high-five their beards together because both have immaculate beards. They, they so do. They, they do. do. They, they, they put do. the time in. The yeah. time and work into those beards. <laughs> uh, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, uh one question I did ask Coach Parnell, uh, mascot battle royal uh, of OAC mascots. They asked Mike Leach this, and who would win, and may maybe give me a, some of the reasons why OAC mascots would lose. I mean, you have to take Stinger. Stinger's pretty jacked. I, uh, I saw him in that Cleveland Browns mascot game, was trucking some fools, so good for Stinger. Um did, did, you, get, did you get different video than I got of him jacking fools, stinger jacking? Yeah. yeah he I missed did, like, a game-winning tackle, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. You, you must have missed that clip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would have to put a pioneer up there because they have, I mean, they have a weapon. where They have a bayonet, and weapon always helps. 
Uh, oh, man, you asked me quick. I have to think about this. I mean, Muskingum, if the right size musky, they're actually pretty deadly to smaller fish. Uh, I'd have to take your word on that. I figured you might know something about <laughs> the, the fishermen that you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be biased and take Stinger because – if he got in trouble, he could fly away, but he's also yoked enough that he could hold his own in a battle. So, I love I, That's a smart <laughs> answer. That's a smart answer. <laughs> so a, any last parting words you'd like to, to share with the masses? Yeah, no, this, this season's been uh, – it, it's been trending the right direction, and I hope everybody gets a chance to come out and watch uh, watch these young men come out and, you know, work and – you know, put together a good game on Saturdays. Uh, Berea being an awesome football town, I know that's never an issue. Uh, the school support's been awesome. So this weekend, especially being back at home these next two weeks is huge. So uh, if you're around Berea this, this Saturday afternoon, come hang out. And then we got cigars afterwards. So if you want to come <laughs> hang out, we, we can do that too. So <laughs> there, there, there you go. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing, last thing I want to say, and, and, and he's, you talked about Coach Hilbert mm -hmm. uh, and, and the great job he does. And, and Tim and I, ta again, talked about his coach. The thread, again, that, that weaves itself through BW history is our great coaches. Uh, back to the Lee Trestle era. Oh, yeah. Uh, coach Fisher era. Uh, coach Taraski. Uh, you know, Coach Hilbert's right in that mold along with other, others we have here. Dean, and I, and I said this to, to Coach Parnell, you guys are in that mold as well, and, and, and I appreciate uh, – th this is the AD talking here as we close up, but, you know, I appreciate what you do uh, for our student-athletes. It's a thankless job so much, but I appreciate you. I appreciate the work you put in every day. Uh, there's never a down day when, when you're working with the kids, and I, I, and I respect that because uh, there can be some hard days, but the kids never see it, uh, and, and, and that means a lot to what their experience ultimately is. So thank you to all you do. I, I appreciate you. Thanks so much you. for Leadership joining. Leadership starts at the top, man. Don't sell yourself short. Oh, sell myself short. Uh, <laughs> face for radio and just kind of faking it till I make it as the that's, athletic that's director. That's why I told Nelly I should have gone to makeup before this, but, you know. So. <laughs> Your beard's coming along. Yeah, my mom trimmed it this weekend, so we're, 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 we're in going business. the right way. Yeah. So. <laughs> All, right. All right. Again, looking ahead, thank you so much, Coach Collison, Coach Parnell, and Tim Budick for joining us.